Hey everyone, it's Rachel. Thank you for watching this video. In this video, I am making some gifts for a family member of mine that, that are expecting their first baby and I'm so excited to be making some things for her and her little one. And they're doing a Winnie Pooh um, shower based theme. And I'm gonna make some mugs real quick and then the rest are gonna be all Winnie Pooh. So we're gonna go ahead and use infusible ink. This one, this is called Cosmic Patterns, and this is Pink Lemonade. So Cosmic and Pink Lemonade. It's so gonna be using this one, and I'll be using, I think I did the blue, yeah, I did do the blue pattern. So let's go ahead and um, get started with those. I'm gonna move that over here. Right now I got my mug press that is heating up right now, and I went ahead and already cut them out. Just have not taken them off. The mat, I am a little bit worried about, looks like it kind of cut through, um, uh, the quality of the cut. Yeah, I don't know if it just cut through or what, but we are going to, now they say that you shouldn't, you should be able to crack it open and peel it off from there. Like you're not doing like a traditional, um, weeding because you don't want to scratch the ink but I think I'm a little worried about that. I'm gonna say don't do what I'm doing do as I say because I am a little worried about the size of my text and I already just lost my dot to my establish so um, I am going to instead of trying to crack it and again I'm okay with it the the fusible ink being scratched over here just because I am not um, I am not sublimating that on this part. So, but that's what they do say. You wanna to try to crack it and then peel it that way and try to avoid using your kneading tool. So that is what we're gonna do. And this is so super tiny. Okay. I was a little bit difficult we'll see how it turns out and what we're going to do is we're going to get this one going these actually come with fiber floss and comes with little directions and then in fact i'm going to need the parchment paper and you guys always want to make sure that you keep that little silicone pouch in there, keep this dry, keep it in the, the black container or the black plastic because that helps the, keep the life of your material longer. Okay, so I'm gonna get a lint three free cloth. Make sure I clean that real good. Then what we're gonna do is you're gonna use some heat tape this is by Cricut. Really need to get a tape dispenser for this. So, this is kind of what I have going on right now. Okay. Get that right there. Open that up, okay. And then, this is actually sticky, so it should be fine. And then, we'll see here. We'll put this. When you do do this, you want to make sure that you mirror it. Actually, I don't even think I need tape. But to ensure that this does an extra good job, I'm going to go ahead and tape it anyways. Now, you most certainly can trust the fact that this will stay, like the sticky part will stay sticky. But I'm, I don't know, with infusible ink or just sublimation in general, I tend to be a little cautious of that. Okay, that should be, that should be good to go. Okay, then you want to put your parchment paper. So here's that little silicone thing that I, used, I was talking about that helps keep the moisture out of here. So I'll put that back in there. A little bit bigger than what I need. That's fine doesn't need to go, really doesn't need to go all the way around. So just needs to protect the area that you're, because you don't want that sublimation ink accidentally um, 
get on your your jug or your your mud press, I should say. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here like so, and then I'm gonna close that and then let it count down. Okay, so here is for the dad, and I like I said, I am a little worried about how well the smaller letters are going to be, so I might end up having to. We'll see how this this goes. All right, so technically you're supposed to be able to bend it. I just I'm just worried since that's such a thin cut. I don't know. There we go. I got it started. Okay, let's just push that back down. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. I just don't want my small letters to be weeded out just yet, so I'm just kind of cutting that out, trying to get the bulk off. Okay. Okay, so far so good. Okay, we can only hope. Oh wow, the, the period actually stayed. Yay! All right, that's so bad. So, let's go ahead and bend that. And then, okay, I'm going to have to assist this one a little bit. Now, these mugs are sublimation mugs. You can't just use any sublimation, so they have to be sublimation. And um, I bought a pack of these, like, there was probably, like, 12 in there. And I was doing a craft show, so that is why um, I'll link it in case you want to do a, a bunch of them. If you're into craft projects or craft shows, I should say. Okay, so I got that done. This is almost done. So I will um, do the magic of editing for you guys um, the next clip. I'm going to have both of them done and we'll see what they look like. Okay, so the last one just got done. Now the handle is not hot, so you don't have to worry about that. And this one is still a little hot, so I'm going to be really careful. So let's go ahead and reveal... It's like there's a little something there. Oh, uh, you guys, look at it. I am loving it. That is so pretty. And again, the established 2024 was curved, and then this was straight. Now it's a little different for his cup, but I am loving that. I love this infusible ink. I think that turned out super pretty. Now, I would most certainly advise to wait until it really cools down before you. There's a blue dot right there, and that is either from the transfer ink that I use, infusible ink, or that is most likely um, dust particles. So that's why it's so important to lint roll your, and I didn't, um, I just used the lint-free cloth and to wipe this down. Um, use some rubbing alcohol, that does make a difference. I forgot to add that. But um, those little blue dots that you will see, uh, and there's another one again, there's right there. Um, th that is um, because I didn't get a dust particle, I guess. Um, so let's take a look at them together. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up real quick. So here they are. Sorry, this is a little bit on the side. It's just this one's super hot and this one's not that bad. Still, uh, still very hot, but uh, more manageable than this one. Um, but anyways, I really liked how these turned out. Just make sure, like I said, these little blue dots, you don't get them on the fabric too when you do polyester. But if you don't lint roll it, uh, so you want to make sure that you lint roll it and you want to make sure that you... Um, do if you're doing a, a hard surface like this, then you want to make sure that you lint roll it, um, do some rubbing alcohol, clean the surface there, and that way you will not get those blue dots. Like this one, I think I did a better job. I don't see any blue dots on this one, um, or blue speckles, if you will. So this one did really good. This one I got too, but that's okay. It happens, and honestly, it's not that noticeable. This is why I don't do infusible ink, or I don't do a lot of sublimation just because of these little speckles, especially now that I do print and cut and it has a transfer. I think that it works perfectly. And I'm not a big fan of polyester anyways. So, all right, let's go ahead. We got a few more projects. Actually, we got quite a bit on our plate today. So we're actually gonna experiment with something new that I have not done, so I'm excited to do, to do that. 
that. So we'll do that in a little bit. But um, hopefully this helped you with doing some infusible ink and getting out your infusible ink and using it. I just really like each pattern that these had to offer. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into the next project. Okay, so our only um, adhesive vinyl, if you will, is this which was on accident. You'll understand why here in a moment. And so I've done prints and cut, so that's not new, but I have not done the iron-on prints and cut for wood. And so what happened was a project that I was, we're gonna be showing next, I accidentally put it on a printable iron-on. So it's the first time and, that I've used it. So I quickly, before I real, after I realized it, after I printed, and of course cut out, um, I went to the website to see if I'm able to use printable iron-on for wood, and you are. So I figured why not just go with it and see how well it does. I have the heating instru instructions on my computer, so um, it takes low temperature for 10 seconds, so it doesn't seem like it takes a whole lot to, um, to iron-on to wood, okay? Um, so let me go ahead and get these middles weeded out. So the theme for the shower um, is Winnie the Pooh. And so I thought, why not just make that the theme of the gifts? So I got these SVGs on Etsy. Not quite long enough, but it will be long enough for this project, for this. Okay. So let me go ahead and... Okay, so I'll just scrape that down real quick. Who is getting inspired with these print thing cuts? I mean, I don't know. I know that I do a lot, and I apologize. Maybe some of you guys don't really like it. Um, I haven't really received any neg negative feedback, but. Um, you guys, I just, I'm obsessed, and so this kind of, kind of be my season for a while, and also, of course, the vinyl, I'm never going to give that up, because I have a lot of it that I need to go through. I think that looks good. So the areas that is, is exposed, I'm going to use my fingers, I don't want to accidentally scrape that. So I bought this just before, actually, I apologize, I forgot, I bought this from Hobby Lobby, and I did, it came in this natural wood, and I just went ahead and just add, I think, two coats of white chalk paint. Okay, it's kind of ripping there at the top, but that's okay, because I don't need that to be adhered. Long as the bottom is good, I'm good. Okay. I guess I could save. Well, yeah, I guess I can save this branch. Let's see. And I do have these pieces. I'm gonna try to save. So let me get out my cutting mat here and see. I'm not saying I am going to use them, but. We can see. Okay. I'm going to put that to the side here and let's see what I can do to use that. And if I can get it off my finger. Okay. That's what it looks like. I'm not sure if I'm gonna want this to maybe 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 I don't know just to kind of since we have it no that does that does not look right if anything nope okay Hmm. No, I think it needs to just, it just needs to stay off. Bless this more sometimes. 
All right, well, this project is done. I really like this, how this turned out. And I think it'd be kind of cute to put the picture of the new baby in here with this. I think she'll really like it. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to all the rest of the projects are all iron on. And but we're gonna do another wood sign with a, the iron on print bowl vinyl and see how that works. The next one is this doorknob um, sign here. And I what I did is I accidentally put in um this design on the dark fabrics iron on so we're gonna see how well that plays out now actually all the stuff that i'll be ironing on that are fabrics are all actually light but i had like the worst luck last time i used the la the light iron on printable fabrics so i thought why not just use the dark fabrics peel this off very gently Be careful that I don't accidentally rip the small, really intricate pieces. Now, of course, if you have wording on yours, you're going to want to mirror it. But again, mine didn't really. Actually, no. Do you have to mirror? No, you don't have to mirror it. I'll take that back. Because you're not turning it over and then ironing on. You're actually just peeling that vinyl off of the print of the backer, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, it does come with the print of. Um, with a parchment paper, so we're gonna use that. And then it says for low setting for 10 seconds. So I'm gonna use this. Now, if you, this is pretty thin, it's probably like a 16th of an inch, inch eighth inch thick, excuse me. And um, so I'm worried about it warping, so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and use my mini press, so that way it's not so much heat that will be applied. Now this you want to put on directly because you don't want to accidentally or you don't want to apply direct heat with your iron to your image here. So just make sure that you um, use the parchment paper. Okay, so I'm going to let this heat up and then we'll go ahead and iron this on. Okay, so it did just chime. So I'm going to go ahead and move it around for 10 seconds being very careful not to accidentally move my design or let it wrinkle. We don't want that to happen. Okay, I think I did it for 10 seconds. So I'm gonna carefully move this off of my, it looks like it's trying to stick, oh goodness. Oh, I think it's sticking to the, um, the, the paint, not the image. Okay, so it looks like it's stuck right there. I'm, I'm not sure why. Um, maybe it did a little bit longer than I should have, but first time using printable iron on, on wood, and it did really well. So I'm glad that I didn't trash it and then reprint it. I'm glad that I just decided to look it up because that would have been a kind of a waste since this worked. So this is going to hang on her door. I thought that was super cute. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the next project. So I am going to go ahead and do a cute little bib for them. And I kind of started to weed this earlier because it didn't look like it um, cut right. So I wanted to make sure and test it before I brought it to the channel here. And you'll actually see at least the, the poo again in another project of mine except mine is the bees. I thought it'd be a little bit different but I really um, thought this would be cute to put on the bib here. So I'm gonna go ahead and carefully weed this out. This file did not cut really, it cut really oddly. I don't know, these little bee antennas are kind of weird and I don't know if I should keep them in the, um, on the um, bib or what should I do? Because without the antennas, it kind of looks kind of weird, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Like this one, it cut, but it's so weird how this got cut out. I don't know if it just didn't, what happened. Hmm. You know, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'll just cut the antennas off. Probably you guys are just telling me not to do that, but honestly, I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. Because those bees are so darn cute. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lint roll this. Perfect, glad I did, looks like it's very linty. Okay, and then of course I want to go ahead and 
I need to do that again as I throw the lint over there. Jeez. Okay. And then I just bought these bibs, um, this bib from Hobby Lobby. So for the setting for the printable vinyl is, um, iron on is 13, or no, thir I'm sorry, medium setting for your mini press uh, for 30 seconds. A little bit more heat for the um, fabric iron on. Okay. And then just like we did before, you're gonna go ahead and it might be easier just to peel it back this direction, let gravity kind of assist. I think there is transfer tape for it. I just I wanted to use it for this project, but you know what? I just, I don't know. I didn't want to accidentally ruin something. So I might just have to do it on a throwaway project and then attempt it. Okay. And what else is weird, it cut out, it was trying to cut out the um, the little honey jar, and that was weird. So I don't know why it did that. So this file was a little, I should have, I don't know. I don't know why I did that, but that's all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get this little guy. Actually, let me look at it one more last, one last time. I'm going to go ahead and iron Winnie the Pooh first, and then I'll go ahead and do the bees next. Okay, I think that's 30 seconds. I'm going to peel this back. Okay. I just see some of the ink that just came off of there. But here we go. Oh, that is so adorable. Oh, I'm loving it. Almost feels like it's infused, honestly. This uh, printable vinyl is just on point. So this design, and again, if this bothers you that doesn't have the antennas, by all means, you know, you just do whatever you want to do. But um, I think it's too cute not to. Now this design is going to be a little different than um, what you'll see if you get the if you get it from Etsy. It did have like the little flying trail. It's a dashed line, and I just knew that that was not going to cut out really well. So I just went ahead and delete or uh, sliced it with um, an object like a circle or square or whatever and sliced it out it's just I just knew it was not going to cut out nicely so it was so thin at this small scale so I just went ahead and did that okay so there's that one. Oh, I absolutely love how this turned out this is absolutely cute now despite the fact that the little antennas are not there I still think it's a super adorable okay let's go ahead and get into the next project okay we got more onesies we have three onesies to do and then that is it so we're gonna go ahead and take them one by one I got different sizes because us mamas know that you need more than just newborn sizes and I Oh, you guys, this brings back memories to when my little girl was this tiny. Oh, man. My sister makes a book for her every year for her birthday. And so she just showed me her third book that she's made for her third birthday. And I'm, I'm like, I cannot believe she's changed so much over the years. So I have three different ones. And I think this one is going to go on yep that one okay so let me go ahead and get that weeded out but it's amazing time is such a thief let me tell you I mean I'm sure you guys are fully aware of that but it's hard to believe my my little kid she's gonna be three next month and gosh she'll be starting school hopefully next year let's go ahead and bring that I think that looks good to me. When my da daughter no longer was fitting the onesies, I was so sad. I just absolutely love onesies. There we go. Oh, look how cute. Okay, let's go ahead and get into 
the next one. Why that's sticking to the parchment paper? That's weird. I never had that issue before. So there we go. Oh, I really um, like this one on the pink. I think that's really pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the last one. Now this one, I don't know why, but it printed. I don't know what happened. I don't know if you can tell, but it kind of did this little, I don't know if that was if that was part of a defect in the, the vinyl or that was my printer. I mean, the printer did the rest of this and didn't have any issues, so I'm assuming it was this vinyl, so I don't know. Okay, well, here they are. I just absolutely love them. And let's go ahead and bring in everything together to see how they look. And we'll take one last look at each one and I'll let you guys know which one my favorite one is. Well, here they are and oh my gosh, you guys, I don't know. This is by far probably one of my favorite um, videos that I did. I, again, I'm not a big, not that I'm not a big Winnie the Pooh fan, just never really got into it and now I'm a, a fan. I absolutely love how everything turned out. Oh my goodness. I, I think that despite this is this all is for the mom and dad, I feel like they just needed something a little special for them in particular and they're going to need their caffeine. But anyways, I absolutely love how these turned out and there was no ghosting so it turned out super good and I know I lost a little dot and actually they had the little accent pieces on the side but you know what it's okay no one's gonna know and I don't think she's gonna care <laughs> as long as she has her caffeine right <laughs> when she's able to drink it of course but oh my goodness I love them I just they just really are they it, it did a really good job I can't wait to get into more infusible ink and then the rest of them oh my goodness I just think despite them being very similar, I mean, okay, it's Winnie the Pooh, right? But um, <laughs> I just really loved how this turned out. So this was a great first project to do iron on for um, for the printable HTV. I may uh, try to do something a little different. I'm curious to see how this is gonna fare with um, it being on the outside um, because I really wanna do a printable vinyl a wood round for my outside, but I figured with the H the normal printable vinyl, it wouldn't last with the elements outside because it gets really humid here and of course the sun's directly hitting it. So I might do another printable vinyl that's HTV, not this of course, but something entirely different and see how well it lasts with water being on it and of course the sun. So I will, um, and the humidity of course. So I will report back, maybe I'll do a one video of, um, doing a wood round for the outside because I don't think the adhesive vinyl, I might do adhesive vinyl and iron-on, printable iron-on and see how well it does outside. And like I said, I live, I live in the South where it gets really hot and humid. So if anything, it's a good area to test the products. But to be honest, the HTV iron-on is a little bit expensive for to use you know, iron on in general for wood. I would just go ahead and use the printable vinyl. That's just my recommendation. You do what you want to do. But I just, like I said, this was an accident why that got on there, on the printable HTV. But, of course, this one, I just think it's super cute. I like how this kind of falls off the edge here. And I also like how it just kind of hugs around this corner here. And I like the fact that Winnie the Pooh is also looking at the little, um, the, hi the hive. But I also like the fact that once she puts a picture in here, it's almost like Winnie the Pooh is looking at the baby or, you know, whatever they end up doing with this one. And then, of course, the iron on on the material. I just, oh my goodness, I am loving these onesies. These one onesies turned out super adorable. And like I said, she doesn't have to worry about the baby accidentally, not that as a newborn, the baby would. Maybe when she gets a little older, she might try to. But um, actually, like I said, they're really infused into the um, into the 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 onesie, so we don't have to really worry about that. And I know that we used the same one for the pink for the bib, but again, they kind of look a little different given that I added the bees to the bib and not to the onesies. It just kind of gave me another way to, or another excuse to use this same print. I just, this is by far my favorite um, style of Winnie the Pooh. So the big question is, which one is my favorite? And I have to say, 
and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the mugs as well. But I like all of them. They all turned out super adorable, but I have to say it's tied. I really do like this photo frame. I think this frame turned out super adorable, but if I'm forced to choose, it's gonna be this bib. This bib is really just on point, right? It turned out super adorable. And this is just, and all, by the way, all of the fabrics are all 100% cotton. So, but anyways, this one I think is going to be my favorite. Let me know in the comment section which one your favorite one is. Leave me a little, if they have it, a bear emoji. Let me know that you made it to the very end. And I hope you that you enjoy this. Please let me know which one your favorite one is and if you enjoyed this video. And of course, if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. That really helps out my channel. All right, everyone, you guys have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.